Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make It's Marco here and today we finally talk about airbrushing. Hmm, where can I start? Okay, airbrush, airbrush, airbrush. I don't know how to start. This is an airbrush. When I started writing this video, I didn't realize how much information I needed to handle, only to introduce the main topics. So, it will be divided in a couple of videos to be more digestible and comprehensible. I want to share everything I learned about this topic, creating on the channel some kind of airbrushing encyclopedia for miniature painters. And since it's a ton of stuff, I need to do it properly and give you the time to process everything. So, you'll see a second part next week. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. And if you want to support the channel, check the link to the Patreon page down below in the description. Let's start saying that I love the airbrush. I was curious about this tool when my friends were absolutely sure that you can't use an airbrush for miniatures. They are too small. I started playing with it when almost nobody used an airbrush for miniatures, using it also for different projects like motorcycle helmets and other stuff not related to miniatures. I survived the era of uh, airbrush haters and airbrushes cheating. And a little note about this, there's still in our little world the idea that to paint a good piece you have to suffer and spend months working on the same model. That's stupid. If you like to work this way and you enjoy the process, okay, fine, but there is absolutely no value in that pain and you shouldn't pass that sense of guilt to new painters. The result is the only thing that really matters, and in painting, the end always justifies the means. So, talking about their brush in particular, my point is, if you can obtain the same result in two minutes instead of two hours, well, why not? And to come back to the main topic, I'm living now with some doubts, these times of, you need an airbrush to paint miniatures. So, I love the airbrush as a tool between dozens of others, and this is what I need you to understand. Also, in these videos, I want to be brutally honest with you guys. There are too many urban legends and things people, even advanced painters, do wrong or without knowing how and why they work. This really drives me crazy, because only knowing your stuff you can really understand and master a technique, transferring the skills to all the possible situations. Miniature art is still very young, and we have been the last to discover airbrushing. Airbrushes are out there since the beginning of the 20th century, and they have been used for decades for photo retouching, illustration, makeup, nails, automotive, murals. We have to learn and steal techniques, tips and tricks from this kind of arts. We don't have to start from scratch, but there is a century of knowledge already there to help us saving time and avoid any kind of frustration. So, do you really need an airbrush? No! You can do everything with a brush. A brush is the perfect tool, and it has been the same for centuries, since someone put some hair on a stick to move colors around. This is all the technology we really need to paint. Why would you need an airbrush? To speed up the work. For modelers and miniature painters, that's the whole point. Again, everything an airbrush can do can be done with a brush, but not the contrary. But airbrushing is crazily fast, if you know how to do it properly. Who should buy an airbrush? This is unpopular these days, but uh, since I'm not trying to sell you anything, I don't really care. I strongly discourage beginner painters to buy an airbrush. You lack the basic knowledge and experience about uh, basic techniques, uh, paints, uh, their dilutions and their behaviors under different conditions, to use it properly. It's like driving a motorcycle without knowing how to keep balance on a bicycle. Some experience with a brush is preparatory to a pleasant and effective use of the airbrush. Trust me, you should know the theory and practice a bit on layering, glazing, working with transparencies and wet blending before the jump to airbrushing. In future videos I guide you in this path, but don't rush, don't skip steps and enjoy your journey. So here is how it works. An airbrush works by passing a stream of fast-moving, compressed hair through a Venturi pump. If you are interested in the physics of the airbrush, just Google Venturi pump and you'll have all the information you need. 
which creates a local reduction in air pressure, resulting in a suction effect that allows paint to be pulled from an interconnected reservoir at normal atmospheric pressure. The high velocity of the air atomizes the paint into very tiny droplets. In a double-action airbrush, the operator controls the amount of paint using a variable trigger which opens more or less a very fine needle, that is the control element of the paint flow. An extremely fine degree of atomization is what allows an artist to create smooth blending effects. This allows the blending of two or more colors in a seamless way, with one color slowly becoming another. A skilled airbrushed artist can produce painting of photographic realism or can simulate almost any painting medium. That's how much versatile an airbrush can be. And what kind of airbrush you need? It depends on what you plan to do with it. There are two main macro categories. Single action, where you can control only the airflow in a very basic way. Basically, it's an on-off device. Single action airbrushes are easier to use than double action airbrushes. They are super cheap and perfect to work on terrains and to prime big batches of models. So, don't spend money in expensive machines if this is your goal. But most people, despite the few extra headaches, should still use double action airbrushes where you can control at the same time the flow of air and paint. For miniatures, I always suggest gravity fed airbrushes. Paint can be fed by gravity from a paint reservoir sitting atop the airbrush, called gravity feed, or a siphon from a reservoir mounted below, the bottom feed, or also on the side, side feed. Each feed type carries unique advantages. Gravity feed instruments require less air pressure for suction, as the gravity pulls the paint into the mixing chamber. Typical instruments with the finest mist atomization and detail requirements use this kind of method since less air pressure allows a finer control of the paint flow and less overspray in general. A bottom fade airbrush typically holds a larger capacity of paint than the other types, and this is often preferable for larger scale work like on terrains, for example. We usually use only a small quantity of paint at very low pressure, and a gravity-fed system is the most efficient way to handle few drops of colors at a time. I also suggest a nozzle of 0.4-0.3 mm to work on terrains and 0.2 for all the rest, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. And here we are, which brand and model? I know that you want names and I'll give you some ideas of what to buy, but again, let's be honest. I've seen too many times on YouTube and social media painters tell you should buy this. This is the best airbrush for miniatures. Bullshit. Can I say bullshit on YouTube? I don't know. You have to buy what is easy to find in your geographic area, especially spare parts and accessories. You don't want to have an airbrush impossible to be maintained or fixed because spare parts are difficult to find or cost a fortune in shipping costs. So, if you are lucky to have a physical shop in your city, try and see what they offer, or browse different websites based in your country and check their selection of airbrushes and spare parts. For me, this is the best way to buy an airbrush online. Online you can also find very cheap double-action machines, but they are basically toys, and they will make you hate the whole experience, so avoid them. In general, you know that you are looking to a good machine when its price starts to be around 100 euros. There are a lot of different brands like Badger, Harder and Stenbeck, Iwata, Olympus, Pasche, but this price always corresponds to their medium-high range of hobby airbrushes, and that's all we need. And here are my airbrushes. Harder and Stenbeck Evolution, Harder and Stenbeck Infinity CR Plus, and the Iwata HPBH. The Evolution was my first proper tool, and I still use it for the heavy-duty work. In five years, I had to change nozzle and needle only two times. 0.2 mm nozzle, very user-friendly, super easy to clean and handle. I think it's still one of the best starting points for price and general quality. The Infinity is sold like a tool for extreme precision, thanks to its 0.15 mm needle. Thanks to a really good marketing and a sponsor painters, Almost everybody owns one of these, but I don't like it. 
it's not user friendly as the evolution and the difference between an Hopoi 15 needle and a Hopoi 2 is almost nothing when it comes to precision and quality but it clogs more easily so you have to clean it more often and more carefully which means uh, more stress on the various parts and more chances for trouble. The Iwata HPBH is my sacred, perfect, unstoppable beast. It's really a professional tool, able to resist to every kind of stress and be always perfect. You need a trained finger to be able to use its full potential. I'm still learning and discovering new tricks every day, but you'll never regret the purchase. Again, 0.2 nozzle, it has also an extra pressure gauge on its body for a finer control of the pressure you set on the compressor. There is a consistent jump in price between the Evolution and the Iwata of about uh, 150 euros, but uh, here you have uh, a proper professional tool that's probably even too professional to be used only on miniatures. What pressure? We we'll talk with more details about these, analyzing different situations, but for now check the second part of my video about the compressor for all the answers about my basic pressure settings. And to close this uh, first part, what kind of paint and dilution? This is the aspect of their brushing with the highest level of disinformation, at least in the miniature world. The truth is, uh, you can put in the airbrush every kind of paint every kind of dilution to produce every kind of effect. You don't need paints specifically made for the airbrush. They are just diluted paint and even with their dilution they can't be perfect for every kind of machine, pressure and work and you still have to dilute them or even worse they can't become thicker if you need a different consistency. So don't spend money for specific paint but just use what you already have in your shelves. Also, and I really hate this one, really hate it. How many times did you hear that you need to dilute your paint to the consistency of milk? Oh, I hate this one so much. I spray constantly inks that are fluid as water and with less surface tension, or primers or base tones much thicker than milk. There isn't a perfect dilution good for everything. When you stop trying to follow these stupid rules, you can really start enjoying the airbrush and everything you can do with it. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. You can ask me anything down below with a comment and follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. If you want to support the channel and help me increasing the quality of this content and the time I can spend shooting and editing, check out my Patreon page and maybe join the community. See you next week, guys.